Big Eeks, I've just come up with a new slogan for the Craft Beer Channel. Go on. Getting f***ed up so you don't have to. <laughs> so today we're going to be diving into the strong, strong world of triples. Um, it's something we've put off for a little while, partly because the history is very convoluted and confusing, mm. and partly because, yeah, that's 9.5%, that's 8%, and that's 8.4%. Easy, mate. Yeah, I mean, we say that, we drink double IPAs all the time, so this isn't the most outrageous video we've ever done. <laughs> um, what's your, what do you reckon the, the history is of triple? I know it's from the low countries, so it's Belgium. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Wes Mao invented it. Yep. Uh, but I don't know that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's got triple the amount of everything in it. Of everything? Yeah. Water, malt, hops and yeast? No. <laughs> triple the hops, triple the malt. Okay. Um, and that's, that's basically all I know. I know it's, it's, I know it's dangerous stuff. <laughs> I know it's delicious. Yeah. Um, and I know surprisingly it's pale, and then a, a double is, is dark. So and then a quad is dark as well, it's just, surrounded by darkness. It's so strange. It is surrounded by darkness. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the darkness doesn't really lift for the history of it. Um, Westmal is known as the mother of triples, yes. right? Which does imply that it was the original. As far as I can tell, actually, a guy called Hendrik Vandelins... Great name. Uh, who worked for or, or, or maybe founded Whitcap Brewery, which is still going. Okay. It's made by Schlag Murder Brewery, who produced the... Um, well, they produced a beer called Slag Pills. As far as we can tell, he invented the triple. He did some work or some consultancy for West Mile Abbey, who wanted to brew a pale beer that would compete with like the continental lagers that were coming out. So you've got Pilsner Arkell about 100 years beforehand. Mm -hmm. Everybody's copying that. The UK is now making pale ales. And they're like, we want to make a pale ale. But it's Belgium, so we'll, I don't know, we'll make it at twice, least twice the strength. Twice as strong. We're from Belgium. <laughs> but the story is uh, that Westmile took what, uh, what Hendrik did um, and made Westmile triple about a year later. Right, okay. And called it, they were the first to call it triple. Okay. I think. They got in there early with the name. Exactly. So Quite they right. came up with the brand name and indeed I think still brew the iconic... And the you know the one that everything is tested against because yeah. it's it's a world class beer. Um, on the dark light thing, mm. it's interesting. So it does make sense that this was light when the double and the quad were dark, which were invented beforehand because they were trying to make a pale beer. Yes. So I think that's why it's pale. They were like people aren't that interested in dark beers. It's at a the strong moment. pale ale. Strong pale ale. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Obviously, the flavours are totally different. The yeast they're using and everything. Whether it has triple the amount of malt, I think that's nonsense. Okay. Um, compared to, like, the double. You know, the, the doubles are 7.5%. You don't need triple the amount of malt of the double to get to 95 yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Triple the hops would... would well, that would be a dry, double dry hopped West Mal <laughs> triple, which, you know, you know might, it might have its I'd, benefits. I'd give it a go. Um... So I, I think really they were just like, well, that's a double, so the next level up's a triple. Although I don't know whether double was the name beforehand. I'm not quite sure. Um, and then the quad. I mean, who knows? I mean, the double to the quad, you know, maybe the quad should be called the double because that probably had double the amount of malt with the double. <laughs> ah, Belgium. Belgium. Great chips. <laughs> <laughs> should we start with the mother? Yeah, I want to yeah. start with some chips, but let's start with them. Well, yeah, the chips would be better, wouldn't it? Hazy, isn't it? It is pretty hazy. People talk about how, you know, oh, don't drink New England IPA, it's hazy. I prefer the Belgian classics. Well, I mean, I'm getting banana yesterday. Yeah. Big time. Um, <sighs> honey banana pancake? Honey banana pancake. It's, it smells delicious. It really does. And there's a, a little bit of spikier citrus, a little bit of hop aroma. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's a little bit wheaty. It's a beautifully sweet smell. Uh, it, I, it's top five beers in the world for me, this. It's amazing. It's so smooth. It's so clean. But it's also, you know, it coats my palate. Mm. You know, it's, it's not a long finish, but you know, you know it's been there. Yeah, it's big. Yeah. 
um, but it's not it's not boozy at all. I think, I Amy, mean, when we talk about smoothness, lots of beers are very smooth. It's mm. rare that you'll drink a beer at 7% and go, oh, that tastes 7%. I'm not sure what 7% tastes like, but this does not taste like 9.5. It is beautifully balanced, lovely and sweet, a little bit of bitterness, but otherwise it's like caramelized banana, slight champagne finish, like a, a bitter effervescent dry finish. Yeah. These beers, you know, they, they have high original gravities, but they finish, you know, some of them finish down at like, 008 like Saison territory um, but there's so much malt character so much sweet ester like perceived sweetness that it it feels very sweet and rounded and balanced um, I, I, I think the triple is a very special style and I think the West Mile has never been bettered so next we're going to do something that we very very rarely do on the craft beer channel go on which is to crack a beer owned by AB InBev Oh, that's a dirty word right It's there. a dirty, dirty uh, <laughs> ac uh, acronym and then word. Um, Triple Carmelite was independent until a couple of years ago. Um, it was bought by AB InBev along with its sister beer, which is Deus, which is the lovely champagne triple, yeah. which I used to have uh, as a Bucks Fizz on many a Christmas, but I don't Great anymore. Um, this was the beer that was sort of perceived to rival, certainly in Belgium, the West Mile crown. Right. As, as mother slash queen of triples. Mothers should have crowns. They work hard. So, my memory of this beer is that it differs in that it's drier, more herbal, more hop character. Um, I have not had this beer probably in five years. So I'm really interested to see if that's what my memory of it. Interesting. If my memory is accurate. Do you get that? Time. I get time off of that. Yeah, it's more herbal, isn't it? Mm. I'm not as time. enamoured by this guy, straight off the bat. It's not as, like, heady. It doesn't make you yeah. just want to go... Also, like, quite a lot clearer, I would say. Yeah, it looks a little bit lighter. It smells a lot lighter. That head is a little bit less sort of condensed and creamy, and it's a bit more... Yeah, a little bit more pale ale -y. <laughs> A little bit more, like... Yeah, to be fair. Yeah. Closer to what I'd recognise as, uh, you know, a lager or a pale ale look. And a smell, like, more lemon citrus, herbal... Yeah, it's, fr it's, 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 it's fresh, variety. isn't it? And it's yeah. it's got yeah, like it's got that kind of not earthiness, but a kind of a, like it's saying a, a herbal, grassy, hedgerowy kind, hedgerow -y kind yeah. of vibe to it, for sure. First thing I notice is um, much more carbon, like bigger bubbles, bitey yeah. bubbles, big time, much lighter body, mm. um, much more savoury to start with. That herbal lemon tang thing, but then it is quite sweet on the finish again, like the Westmouth. Yeah. I feel like this is kind of hiding behind the bubbles to make it feel more special, like this one. <laughs> so hiding behind the bubbles? I think so, yeah. I think they've, they've carved it up to give it a bit yeah. more life. Yeah, I think so. Well, then let's knock it out. So that, that's how you decarb a beer, by the way. Just speed up time. Agitate. Yeah. Do you know what? It, it, it's a little bit thin once you've done that. The flavours aren't popping. Feels a little bit, yeah, a little bit watery. Yeah, I feel like the the bubble, the the carbonation was really oomphing that up. Yeah, um, which I mean, it, it, that's true of most beers. You yeah, know, particularly time. like anything that's hugely aromatic, so less lagery and more hoppy or or estery. Mm. That's true, but one, one, you know, if, if we did that to the to the West Mall, I think we still have this treacly, bananary nonsense. Whereas here, we've you can almost taste the minerality of the water, and it's just a much, much lighter beer. So we're going to finish up by going back to Trappist land. Mm -hmm. So we haven't actually mentioned what Trappism is. Super quickly, it's beer that is made by a, a Trappist order. So people who believe in the the, the, the Trappist way of life. Monk life, yeah. Monk life. Um, it's made within the walls of the monastery under the supervision of monks or literally by the monks, depending mm. on the brewery. Uh, and all the profits either go to the, the way of life for the monks or to charitable Christian causes. Cool, nice. So the West Mal beer, even though they make, I think it's over 100,000 hectolitres at this point. So giant f***ing brewery. Yeah. Uh, that all goes to the monks or to good causes. The same is true of this beer. But this is like, you know, I'm not saying this isn't craft because it's one of the best beers in the world. This is craft. These guys make about four and a half thousand hectolitres. So to put that in context, that's almost certainly smaller than your local good brewery. Wow. Uh, in the UK, 
um, most breweries, the average brewery is around about this size. Also, so half of them are bigger, half of Trappist them are Trappist designation. Also has the Trappist designation right there. Just not as good businessmen. Or, or, or maybe they, you know, that it, it might be a smaller abbey. They might yeah. not, um, you know, have the have the funds to grow. You know, Westmile's been doing what they've been doing and being world class at it for a century. So they've they've had time to build up some stuff. And maybe Arch will want to grow. Maybe they don't. Yeah. You see, Shime grow to absurd sizes, like brew dog size. Hell yeah. Right. And at, yeah. at the opposite end, you have West Valetteran, who only produce about one and a half, two thousand hectoliters, which is, you know, almost nothing. It's interesting the difference between all these these different Trappist orders and what why you know I'd love to know what they're in it for. Obviously they're in it for the the the, the greater good and uh, the betterment of God or what, I don't know what they're in it for. But the betterment of God. I don't know. That's sort of that's not a don't phrase, is it? <laughs> that's not a phrase. But you know, I think as far as they're concerned, God's pretty. He's, he's pretty better. He's, he's pretty pretty, pretty he's good. Pretty better already. <laughs> um, you know, I, I mean, if I had to be in a religious order, yeah. I'd want to be in one where we're getting pissed and, and making booze, right? Yeah, but they also, you know, they, they work extremely hard. They still, they work the land, they bake and make Do cheese they? and they pray a lot. That sounds all right. They're the silent pra- for most of the day. I mean, we're, we're all pretty sedentary and silent these yeah, days, right? Brad, you're silent for most of the day. It's just not going <laughs> That's cool, though. What a, what a, like, literal beer pilgrimage to go on, to go there. I mean, we should do it for a, a video. We wouldn't video, be able right? to film in the brewery. They'd never yeah. allow that. Really? I did a tour of Westmile where I got some footage only in the brewery itself. Um, Let's get some of those hidden glasses, films. you know, like the spectacle. I yeah. reckon I reckon God scans you on the way in. <laughs> right, let's let's give this article a go. Ooh. So that has the Chimay... Um, Shemmy has a, a, a bit of nail polish to it. That uh-huh. really floral, almost solventy kind of aroma. Yeah, it's powerful. That's got the same. Arkle's a weird one. So it's a really old brewery, but uh, they they got screwed by the world wars and they got dismantled. And I think it was Westmall or maybe Rochefort, the monks there, helped them rebuild. Nice. Um, so they're relatively new to the brewing game, despite being a very old brewery. I wonder whether they've got a Shimei yeast or Shimei processes or something they've borrowed. Someone's got them off the ground, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and that's why there's a slight Shimei vibe to this. Maybe it's Westmile yeast. I'm getting loads of Westmile vibes from that. You get, you get that, uh, that lovely banana profile. You get that um, brioche thing that all of these have. But on top of that, there's it's much lighter. You know, it's 1.5% lighter, it's 8%, which means that it just feels a little bit lighter. There's not so yeah. much residual stuff left over at the end. Do you know, I can't remember the last time I had that. And it's much better than this one, which is champion as like number two. For me, yeah, number two, number three, mm. no doubt. Out of this lineup, for sure. For sure. You know, it, it really, it really upsets me that. The craft beer movement hasn't been more accepting of these older styles. Um, I, you know, I 100% get why IPA is mm. massive, and it's also mostly what we cover on the channel because it's what we drink every day. But there is nothing that makes me happier than settling in with a West Mile Triple, a Straffa Hendrick, Hendrick Quad, with some cheese, with some cured meats. You know, that is for me the ultimate beer experience. Hunkering down, hunkering down in your in your cave with some meat. Some cheese and some. Or oh, just those little beers. Belgian bars. You know, what's so amazing about Belgian beer culture is that mm. even train stations sell or val, right? That's the level of fing craft that we're talking uh, about. I mean, I'm a big fan of this. And so you go into any pub pretty much in Belgium, outside of those tourist spots, and you'll just find a nice old pub where in the UK you get a pint of bitter. Yeah. In America you get an old West Coast IPA. And in Belgium you get something like a West Mile and you'd order a cheese or a meat plate and just spend the evening loving life. So yeah, guys, let us know what your favourite triples are. Let, let us know if you've ever been to Belgium and experienced the wonderful culture that we have. Um, and let us know if we're in trouble for smack-talking calm like... Uh.